Welcome to Six Gun Guitars Luthier Video Series. My name is Brian. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different starting with this new series of videos of mine. I actually have a customer who wanted me to make an electric bass for them. I normally make acoustic instruments. I've made an electric bass before and an electric guitar as well. But this one's going to be a little different. So what I'm going to do in the next series of videos is I'm going to explain some of the different aspects of electric bass making. Um, the plan is to do a drop top of Paduke over mahogany with a through the body neck and the neck is going to be made out of curly maple, which I have right here. The point of this series is going to be to show some of the different aspects of it, like I said, so today we're going to cover the through neck construction and how to laminate up a neck out of a piece of wood. So I picked up this piece of curly maple, and it's a pretty nice piece. It might be a little bit hard to see some of the curl you know, in it, but you can probably see a little bit of it. Um, it doesn't have a ton of curl, but it just kind of has enough, and there's a pretty good amount of curl on the edge as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one board and I'm going to rip it to two inch increments, two inches wide, and it's a 48 inch long, 48 inch long board. I'm going to rip it to two inches wide and I'm going to stand all three pieces up and I'm going to laminate them together. This board is flat sawn and it's really, really important when you're going to do a neck glue up that you pick a flat sawn board. Um, the orientation of the grain is going to help kind of determine when that neck starts to bend and bow under the pressure of the strings. It's going to kind of determine the strength and it's also depending on if the grain you know, is moving from one direction to the other, it might also determine whether or not there's going to be a twist or a bow or anything like that in the neck in the future. So starting off with something that's pretty well flat sawn, when you cut your two inch strips out of this you know, right across the front and you stand them up, they're going to be quarter sawn. So you're going to have that nice stiffness and the rigidity that you're used to with quarter sawn stuff. So again, this is a piece of maple, and I'm going to bring this over to the table saw. I'm going to saw it into three pieces that are two inches wide, and then we'll show you how to do the glue up and all that. You know, we'll kind of go from there. But the other thing that you can do um, if you're going to do a glue up neck is you can, I'm, just, I'm not going to use any color, off color strips in between. I'm going to do three pieces of the curly maple right next to each other. I want to have that nice figure going right up and I'll, I'm sure I'm going to get pretty small glue seams because this is maple and you know, we're going to press the living daylights out of it with a lot of clamps here pretty soon. But what some folks will do is they'll take a strip of walnut or a strip of cherry, a strip of Indian rosewood and they'll put that in between the three pieces so you'll have a, you'll have a nice white stripe from the maple then you'll have rosewood and you have a white stripe of maple, rosewood and then maple again. Um, and the combinations are endless. You can put Purple Heart in here, you can put Paduke in here, you can do really whatever you want with the neck to make it look classy and send some stripes up the back and whatnot. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to do all three of these guys out of the curly maple and I'll bring you over to the, bring it over to the table saw right now and we should be right back when we'll be gluing it up. Alright, so the piece has been cut into three on the saw and now what I'm going to do is just stand up each one of them one at a time so that way the edges are showing on the top. Go ahead and bunch them together. Now I've got what I'm going to glue together to be my through the body neck blank. Um, this started out as a regular piece of 4-4 um, curly maple here. So in the end, I'm actually just over 2 and a quarter. I think it's 2 and 5 sixteenths is the total width on this, um, which is just barely wide enough to do a base neck on it because of the taper and everything. Most string threads around 2 and a quarter. So you kind of have to get at least that much meat out of it. So if you decide to do a couple of veneer strips in the middle, it's going to widen you out a little bit and it'll give you a little bit more room to work with. But we're going to come back now here in a second by the bench and we're going to put some type on in between these. I've got about, I think, 20 of these little bar clamps here and we're going to clamp the living heck out of this thing so that way it glues up really well. And we'll show you how that goes. It's going to be a really pain in the butt if you have to sit here and watch me glue these things up for 10 minutes. So just the way that I do it to kind of keep everything together, um, and again, just using type on original. I like to put glue on both faces so that way when I push them together I am absolutely guaranteed that there is no area inside of here that doesn't have glue in it because inevitably that's what you're going to wind up carving to and you're going to see your seam and it's just it's just not going to look nice. So what I'll do is I'll lay down the first one like this which is going to be my gluing area here and I'll lay this the other way so that way I've got these two areas to apply glue to. What I'll do is I'll start with the type on and I'll just go liberally back and forth all the way down and put in a, a little extra that isn't going to kill you. It'll squeeze out if there's too much. Then I'll come back with my finger and rub it across so that way it gets into all, all the little corners and everything on here. Absolutely every surface will be completely coated. And the same thing on this surface. Then I'll take this one 
and flip it over onto here, let the glue surfaces touch each other. And I'll give it just a little bit of a back and forth to kind of make sure that absolutely everything is distributed right. Now I have my two new gluing surfaces. Again, I'll apply the glue all the way out to here, apply it out nice and thin, put a good film on here, make sure there's no spots that are drying out or anything. Um, it, is, it is Arizona, but it's the cooler months right now, so we're not really contending with you know 100 degree garage here to help dry things out quick. So I'll put, thing, put the glue on both of these surfaces here, then bring this other one over and put it on and do the same thing. I'll give it just a little bit of a slide kind of thing to kind of make sure everything, every last bit gets coated. Then I'm going to flip it up like this and I'm going to start applying my clamps. Now the whole thing with the clamping pressure is you want to get everything nice and centered as far as your clamps go and you want to put as many clamps as possible on this thing because you really have a lot of surface area that you're going to be putting together and there's a lot of area where the glue is going to be touching and by consequence you're just going to need a lot of clamps. Um, I'm probably going to have about 20 or 22 clamps on this by the time it's done just to make damn sure that absolutely every bit of it is covered and it's covered well. So I'm going to alternate them kind of like this and I'm going to make sure that they're kind of pushed down so that way they're about halfway in between um, I, well, the problem I don't want to have is a lot of the clamps get clamped up higher like this and it takes the bottom of the board and makes it flay out, which means the seams down here are going to look terrible. So you want to have really even clamping pressure. I'm going to come along with clamps on the top like this all the way across the board and then I'm going to flip it over lay it down and I'm going to put some clamps on the other side going all the way along so that way there's even pressure in every direction. And also too, if any of these boards want to pop up a little bit before you clamp them, just Give it a little push down or give it a little pull up to keep them as level as you can. Because from this step we're going to run over to the planer. And I don't want to remove that much material from this. This is two inches thick. My final dimensions on the guitar is going to be one and three quarters. So I only have about an eighth of an inch to play with on each side. So I want to make sure that I have the best surface area possible right now. So that way I don't have to destroy it when I put it in the planer. Now we're going to go ahead and glue this up. And like I said I'll do that off camera. And we'll come back and show you what that looks like. All right, so we're back. We glued everything up. I've got all three pieces here. They've got covered in, com completely covered in camp or in the uh, bar clamps, and there is glue squeeze out, literally on every last part of these joints all the way through. Your squeeze out is a really good indicator of how well your glue coverage is. If you have glue squeeze out and there's big gaps, kind of on there where there isn't any squeeze out, it's a pretty good indication that there probably wasn't any glue there. You know, and that's something that you'll have to figure out kind of later on, you know, or depending on how, you know, how long you've had it clamped, you might have to unclamp it and try to get some more glue in there. But um, here it is. It's completely straight. There's even glue squeeze out all the way along it. I've got all these clamps out here clamped with even pressure. Um, I pretty much squeezed them as absolutely hard as I could. I'm going to let this dry overnight and then come back and I'm going to take off all of the regular glue squeeze out that's on here. I'll just do that with a regular old chisel get all that off, get it ready to go through the plane and once it comes out of the other side of the plane uh, we'll start working on it and start transforming this neck blank into a through body base neck.